Hey guys, Dov here. Today I'm kicking off a new sub-series of my Unit Highlight series, which by the way, if you're enjoying the content, we'd very much appreciate a like, and of course, share it if you know anyone that would find this useful, but definitely a like helps me on the algorithm. Anyway, we're talking about... Meta Lords, and I guess in this case it would be a lady, but the Fey Enchantress, uh, one of the most competitive lords in the game, long has been. So in this series I want to talk about the meta quote-unquote lords, the most competitive lords and ladies, and how, when you will see them in multiplayer and what makes them so strong. Uh, so hopefully in the future when other lords come out you can evaluate them as part of the meta and hopefully f try and figure out their place uh, for yourself. Here the Fey Enchantress, a uh, very strong healer, of course Lore of Life uh, with Arcane Conduit. Uh, she's got uh, here Awakening of the Wood, Earthblood, and Regrowth. More importantly, she's got this right here, Miss of the Lady, causes damage to all combatants while she's in melee, uh, colloquially known as a Mortis Engine effect, uh, just generally an AoE constant drain, also gives minus 5 melee attack. Chalice Potions plus a single attack buff, Favor of the Fey, on a single target on an ally, pretty long range, but 40 melee attack. For the rest of the build, she's supported by two Paladins. Defenders of the Fleur de Lee here, we've got a Field Trebuchet, a Companions of Quenelle hidden in the woods here over on the side, already engaged some Cold One Spear Riders with some Questing Knights, uh, more Questing Knights here, a main line of just regular Peasants, some Pox Arrows, and on the Lizardman side we've got a couple Temple Guard, uh, some Javelin Cohorts, two Salamanders, Maznamudi on Slock, and some uh, Red Crest, I believe that's the Regiment of Renown, yes. So Fan Chantress moving in over here, and along with her companions of Quenelle absolutely smashing this unit of uh, Cold One Knights. The Salamanders are going to fire in some uh, <laughs> supporting fire. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but interestingly enough, the companions of Quenelle do have a bit of fire resistance, and also uh, physical resistance of Blessing of the Lady, so they are actually going to be resistant to a pretty good amount of that damage. Speaking of resistances, another thing about the Fey Enchantress that makes her quite unique is she is basically has a 15% damage resistance baseline while, or sorry, 20% while Blessing of the Lady is active and then Guardian gives her an additional 15%. I say damage resistance because on the Unicorn she has 60% magic resistance, so you combine the physical plus magic and that basically equals 35% damage resistance plus your typical character 15% for missiles. And she is very tanky against any kind of magic missiles and even most types of damage while she has uh, the blessing of the lady or and or a paladin nearby so that in and of itself makes her you know surprisingly very very tanky and especially in niche situations like against solar engines and this matchup is a good example or you know skaven also have a lot of magic missiles the empire potentially as well might bring something like the hammer of witches here um all of that means that she'll be very resistant even something like a uh forest dragon in melee, right? Get that resistance um, for for the magic damage and the physical resistance for any type of physical damage. It's quite strong here. He's leading the companions of Quenelle, mostly still very healthy, plus the two paladins. Battle's still very close, though. It's been an absolute scrap. Uh, the mainline engagement here, questing knights have had a bit of a rough time, and there's been a few opportunities I haven't really highlighted where the hunting packs, um, like right here, I would definitely engage Mazdamundi there with these guys. I might just quickly like hit and run very briefly on these hunting packs, not only to interrupt them from firing, but one clean charge from the uh, companions would probably take them out, but instead, uh, understandably so, they rush in to help the Fan Chantress and the two Paladins in this melee engagement against Mazdamundi. These spears are going to come pressure the uh, hunting packs away, so it's not like they can just sit there and fire with reckless abandon, but they've already got some pretty good work done. We can see scars from some various magic damage as well, so it's already been quite the scrap, all things considered. Some more Salamanders still online over here, but this Trebuchet still being online is great. can provide consistent uh, pressure, especially on these two Temple Guard, for example. And also the Fan Chantress, the whole time she's in melee, is going to be draining everything, healing up high-value targets, which there are a handful in this army. Not only the Paladins, of course, but the Companions. But uh, she's currently just getting ran over by Mazda Mundi, I think. Nope, looks like she squeaked away. He is very fast as well, of course, on the uh, on the unicorn. Did I call it a Pegasus earlier? I'm not really sure. Anyway, even with this poison speed debuff there, she's very fast. Nice overcast net from Mazda Mundi. He's going to catch uh, all the companions and uh, some of the heroes here as well. 
and it's good for Mazamundi. He can heal himself up with Apotheosis, try and get back, get uh, re-engaged here. Salamanders once again getting set, firing in, and doing some friendly fire to the Temple Guard. Not sure if they're targeted. Looks like they're targeted probably on the Paladin. Is a little bit rough there, but more Questing Knights moving in to uh, keep Mazdamundi engaged. Questing Knights, of course, great AP values and great sustained combat stats. They could actually do pretty good in this engagement. Uh, you'll notice that it says they're winning combat right now, but here comes the Paladin. Gonna use his anti-large sword, blessed sword of the lady. Mazdamundi drops his banishment there as he is uh, pretty close to done. Prox is charging animation to run over to this field trebuchet. Pretty good play there. Likewise, this Paladin does get finally routed off, and actually, surprisingly... Oh man, that was just recklessly... <laughs> just unneededly reckless. Uh, yeah, needlessly reckless. I can't even English, because that was just... That was like that right there. That's very egregious, Mr. Salamander. You need to stop shooting the Temple Guard. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Paladin comes in to fight mono a mono This is not necessarily the greatest engagement for the Paladin here, this uh, Scarvet on foot. Will trade very well. Um, kind of depends a little bit on RNG, but the Fey comes in here, and you notice she's still completely healthy, despite uh, you know all the stopping power, the different tools that the Lizardmen have. They didn't have anything like top tier, like a Carnosaur, but Mazdamundi's definitely no slouch. Uh, and granted, he didn't ever charge the Fey Enchantress directly, which is very important. If she took a charge to the face with that massive uh, 70 charge bonus, Mazdamundi would definitely do a lot of extra damage. As it is right now, Bretonia's ahead on the balance power. Lizardmen are definitely not out of this, though. These two Salamander hunting packs still online, still have a bit of ammunition left. Finishing off the last of these knights here. Companions, fire damage will only help them so much uh, with that little amount of HP left. And uh, likewise, Paladin has no fire resistance, so he just gets lit up. Quite literally. Kind of getting close here as the peasants scrap. Quite a few Temple Guard left. And the trebuchet crew is alive. They pulled back from the trebuchet there. And after they got terrorized by Mazdamundi, they are going to be able to get back in position and keep fighting, which is pretty nice. But Mazdamundi's very, very low. Shield of the old ones. He's literally fighting two of the companions right here. Oh, gets friendly fired. Gets an apotheosis as well. Does he hold his leadership here? Yep, getting back up above 600 HP. These two companions are like, ah, maybe this is a little bit above our pay grade. Actually didn't route, but just pulled away here instead. Very interestingly enough, but it's going to be close. Bay Enchantress, if you look at her charge bonus, uh, 74 charge bonus on the on the Unicorn means she's definitely no slouch on the charge either. Obviously, as a caster, have the best combat stats in the world. Uh, 42 is decent melee attack with magic damage. 34 defense is pretty poor. So something like that probably hurts, but... At the same time, the resistance stacking definitely helps. With the Paladins gone, it's not quite as impactful. She has not routed, though, so Blessing of the Lady, Blessing of the Lady is still active. And, yeah, man, that 74 charge bonus is definitely very solid. It means that she can definitely get consistent hits on the charge. It's still not going to do a ton of damage. I mean, what is it, 300 weapon strength base? It's okay for a caster. He actually finishes off Mazda Mundi there very impressively enough. It's getting absolute value. And you see that Salamander fire does quite a bit of damage. It does not count as magic. It fire damage, interestingly enough, and magic are separate properties. Fire damage just counts as physical if it doesn't have any magic component right. So she is getting, what, 35% uh, mitigation against Salamander fire? But considering she doesn't have any armor or anything else, and still doesn't have that much HP at the end of the day, it's pretty dangerous. But it looks like that was actually the last of the ammunition being used by the hunting packs there. Another of the hunting packs is sent back to finish off the Trebuchet crew. Chase a bunch of routing units there. Very good play from the Lizardman player. Uh, very aware and sort of uh, cleaning up a lot of this periphery. So it's going to come down to the Fan Chantress versus a handful of lizards. These Questing Knights get a nice charge in here. Fan Chantress with the Steel Chair from the side, absolutely blasting with their magic. Chart attack animation is also pretty awesome. It's kind of doing the Kamehameha blast. <laughs> sort of a, a life Hadoken, if you will. It's very cool, actually, fighting the Salamander specifically. Ooh, blast the Temple Guard right there, too. Or is this, what is this, the Old Blood? Yeah, it's the Scarvet, I mean. Scarvet's very low. But the Fan Chantress definitely doesn't want to fight him in sustained combat. She can cycle charge him. 
As long as there's other troops fighting here especially, and these men-at-arms, of course, as soon as I say that, will rout with their, uh, with their spears and shields. Only so much they can really do, to be honest. And at this point, is it just the Fae? No, in fact, we do have a handful of men-at-arms here coming back from route, and these Salamanders, a little bit over-chasing on some shattered uh, uh, men-at-arms right here. But, like, these units can start to come back from route, and as per the attacking rule, the Fae Enchantress actually doesn't count as attacking, so she can pull away here. And as long as these swordsmen are, and these bowmen here as well, coming back, uh, can advance and get in a position to fire, that counts as attacking. So the mean, all the meanwhile, Fan Trancher is just cycle charging here. And again, every time she charges in, she does a decent splash attack. But more importantly, if you watch the HP bar, just consistently tick down from that uh, Fae Drain effect. Miss of the Lady. Melee attack debuff as well. Co somewhat countered by the Frenzy in this case. But the Fae does need to be careful. She doesn't have much magic to heal herself in this late game. And she doesn't have any innate healing. She also needs to make sure uh, if she routes, she will lose the Blessing of the Lady. That will probably lead to army losses anyway for Bretonia. She's going to pull back out of that engagement there. Very, very tattered lizard units. Looks like trying to pull up some last winds of magic with that arcane conduit. But here come the rest of the Bretonian forces, so let's fast forward as she rallies the troops. Bowmen get in range. They've got a decent amount of ammo left. And they can kite. They're fast enough. Let's see. 33 speed. They are fast enough to kite uh, the uh, the Temple Guard. Actually, the Sora Scarvet is 34 speed, so he could catch them. Um, but, of course, the uh, big danger here is the Red Crest. At 46 speed, even with poison, they can probably still catch peasants. So, Fae dives into them. They don't care. I say dives into them. Dives into one of them, and they don't really care too much. They're just going to absolutely chad through like the skinks they are. Oof, that blast actually does interrupt their attack order there. And now the Fan Chantress Drain hitting all of these units in the late game. Super, super critical. Of course, it's also critical that she doesn't take too much damage, so she's going to pull away there and actually kind of use the bows to screen out a little bit. And ends up sacrificing them a little bit here. Any... Extra damage in this late game, though. It's very powerful. All it comes down to is these swordsmen, really. See how long they can hold. But look at that. The Temple Guard, because of the drain, end up giving up on their uh, their leadership here. Of course, the Cohort of Sotek will fight to the bitter end, but these peasants also have Favor of the Fae, up to 67 melee attack on those men-at-arms. So they actually come in here and deal a significant amount of damage to the uh, Cohort of Sotek and to those Temple Guard, um, you know, on top of the Drain effect. And now, with just the Sora Scarvet left getting surrounded by Peasants, the Fae Enchantress can finally start cycle charging him using that massive charge bonus. Uh, and he gives up the fight. A very close victory for Bretonia. Absolute scrap. So big thanks to Honey Nut and Davina for uh, this one. Honey Nut submitting that replay. This is actually one of the preliminary rounds of my Land of the Living tournament. Uh, that I hosted this past weekend, so very appropriate that the Fae Enchantress be an absolute boss in a replay from that particular tournament. But yeah, very fun stuff, uh, as it is. Honestly, good play on both sides. I like both builds quite a bit. This is kind of a, I would say, meta for Bretonia in a lot of matchups. 110 kills, though, at the end of the day on the Fae Enchantress. It's an absolute beast. Uh, 211 for the Court of Sotek, cleaning up all the peasants. 84 from Mazda Mundi. Temple Guards got some decent value as well, as did the uh, Salamanders, but it's just an absolute scrap, to be honest. Old One Spear Riders did okay, but uh, they ended up getting outclassed. So one engagement where they had some support from Salamanders was decent, but even still, they won't trade very well against Questing Knights. Probably lose one to one uh, regardless, but let's go ahead and take a look here. Just to kind of quickly end on some things about the Fae Enchantress. So, I mean, Lewin is also probably one of the most competitive lords in the game. And, and just from a Bretonian standpoint, can also has a lot of similar upsides in terms of missile and magic resistance. At least while you can have Lion Shield active. But Lion Shield, of course, is an activatable ability means much of the time it will be offline and you can forget to use it, uh, you know, other things. Whereas the Fae Enchantress, most of her um, mit mitigation is passive. In fact, all of it is passive, except you can lose 
uh, Blessing of the Lady. And I guess the active part would be keeping a Paladin nearby for Guardian, right? Um, but just in terms of her baseline abilities, I mean, uh, this here, Miss of the Lady, automatically makes her a very strong Lord choice. On top of the fact that she has Lore of Life, Favor of the Fey is also a really strong ability. 44 seconds of plus 40 melee attack is quite good, and you can use it to make, especially like peasant units, trade upwards ridiculously well um, in very specific niche situations like we saw there in that late game with those men at arms. Very nice uh, in terms of damage output. And also for damage output, you've got Chalice of Potions. This is a little bit harder to use effectively, and it's not something I would recommend always taking necessarily um, but especially if you're going up against like an infantry uh, heavy infantry especially centric uh, faction like maybe greenskins where you're going to expect black orcs or maybe chaos warriors in in that matchup uh, you could use this uh, to get effect there it's a little bit harder to use against mobile units because it does have very long spin up and animation time so it's quite easy to dodge um, but can generate you some good value there likewise <clears throat> There are some situations where you don't even necessarily need to take healing spells, right? Like, I've actually seen a few builds recently where if you have, like, let's say the Fan Chantress either on foot or on, on the Pegasus, on foot she still has uh, decent magic resistance. Not as much, obviously, the, the Unicorn. Uh, did I say Pegasus again? Man, I always get the, that messed up. But anyway, the Unicorn here... <laughs> Unicorn does give her a big a portion of that magic resistance, but she still has some baseline, still has decent weapon strength, and on foot she can roll with like a nasty uh, Gotrek and Felix uh, foot squad. And in this case, it's arguable whether or not you actually need the healing, because Felix uh, did get nerfed, now this only hits one, uh, sorry, max two targets, which I think one of them is always him. So it only affects all one other target within range. So you're not healing all three of them at the same time, but you can still use that to a good degree, especially like if you have the damage resistance of Gotrek's Doom and Helping Hands to kind of throw around. Um, you can keep them on foot. And in this case, if you don't have any very expensive cavalry, like let's say you're going up against Skaven with this and you really don't have any high value like Knights, like maybe you just go kind of wide with a couple Knights of the Realm and a bunch of Knights Errant, something like this. You may not even need to take healing spells, and in that case, you can just go either buffs or damage. Um, Awakening of the Wood is a decent, uh, cheap explosion. There's no overcast, but the minus 48% speed it helps if you're trying to control enemy movements, especially against a slower faction like the Skaven, where there's only a handful of units that you might need to control. You can really utilize your mobility there. Dwellers Below also is a spell you don't see a lot anymore, but it, it does a decent amount of damage. Um, considering what you get out of it, and especially since the Fey also has other damage abilities, you can really use this to, uh, especially like slower infantry units, or if you're expecting a blobby type faction, like, I don't know. I'm trying to think what kind of builds you would use this foot squad against, where you might also take this Dwellers. There's a few different use cases, maybe against like Tomb Kings or others, I don't know. Maybe against like Tomb Guard or something like that. I don't know, I'd have to kind of play around with it and see, but I have seen some discussion and kind of played around with it myself a little bit. It's not bad. Or, I mean, you can't even take her in a secondary caster build um, with just, you know, lore of manticores or whatever. But in general, I would say Fan Enchantress has surprisingly tanky, surprisingly good in combat as well, especially again on the, on the unicorn and just an excellent, excellent ability set that really puts her above your average lore of life caster. So that's it for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.